And all of that changed in March. Now, most governors shut down their states. What followed was record unemployment, businesses closed, most schools were shuttered, and communities suffered. And the U.S. economy came to an immediate halt. Now, let me be clear. COVID didn't crush the economy. Government crushed the economy. And then, just as quickly, government turned around and held itself out as the savior. And frankly, the Treasury Department can't print money fast enough to keep up with Congress's wish list. But not everyone has followed this path. For those of you who don't know, South Dakota is the only state in America that never ordered a single business or church to close. <laughs> We never instituted a shelter-in-place order. We never mandated that people wear masks. We never even defined what an essential business is, because I don't believe that governors have the authority to tell you that your business isn't essential. Now, South Dakota schools are no different than schools everywhere else in America. But we approached the pandemic differently. From the earliest days of the pandemic, our priority was the students, their well-being, and their education. When it was time to go back to school in the fall, we put our kids in the classroom. Teachers, administrators, parents, and the students themselves were of one mind to make things work for our children. And the best way to do that was in the classroom. Now, in South Dakota, I provided all of the information that we had to our people, and then I trusted them to make the best decisions for themselves, for their families, and in turn, their communities. We never focused on the case numbers. Instead, we kept our eye on hospital capacity. Now, Dr. Fauci, he told me that on my worst day, I'd have 10,000 patients in the hospital. On our worst day, we had a little over 600. Now. I don't, I don't know if you agree with me, but Dr. Fauci is wrong a lot. <laughs> Even in a pandemic, public health policy needs to take into account people's economic and social well-being. Daily needs still need to be met. People need to keep a roof over their heads. They need to feed their families. And they still need purpose. They need their dignity. Now, my administration resisted the call for virus control at the expense of everything else. We looked at the science, the data, and the facts, and then we took a balanced approach. Truthfully, I never thought that the decisions that I was making were going to be unique. I thought that there would be more who would follow basic conservative principles. But I guess I was wrong. Ask yourself this question. How far will people go to enforce mask mandates? Once you start lockdowns, how long can you sustain them? In South Dakota, we had some cases in March and April, but the virus didn't really hit the Midwest until late fall. Should we have kept people in their homes from March onward? Of course not. You know, it's important to ask these questions. We have to show people how arbitrary these restrictions are and the coercion, the force, and the anti-liberty steps that governments take to enforce them. Often, the enforcement isn't based on facts. Justifying these mitigation efforts has been anything but scientific. Now, many in the media, they criticized South Dakota's approach. They labeled me as ill-informed, that I was reckless, and even a denier. Some even claimed that South Dakota was as bad as it gets anywhere in the world when it comes to COVID-19. That is a lie. The media, yeah. 
The media did all of this while simultaneously praising governors who issued lockdowns, who mandated masks and shut down businesses, applauding them as having taken the right steps to mitigate the spread of the virus. At one point, I appeared on George Stephanopoulos' Sunday show. I don't know if you watched that. No, you don't? Shocker. He had just wrapped up a segment with New York Governor Andrew, Andrew Cuomo, where he asked, he asked Cuomo to give me some advice on how to deal with COVID. <laughs> now, now seems like a really good time to remind everyone of what Governor Cuomo was doing in New York. On March 25th, Cuomo ordered COVID patients into nursing homes and he prohibited the staff from testing people before admitting them. Nine days later, he pushed legislation prohibiting nursing home lawsuits over COVID deaths. Six days after that, he prohibited nursing homes from sending COVID patients to the nearby Naval Hospital ship or the field hospital, both of which were essentially empty. Now, eight days after that, the first deaths started to show up. And on January 28th of this year, the New York Attorney General announced that Cuomo and his administration significantly undercounted the number of COVID-related deaths in nursing homes by as much as 50%. To make matters worse, they tried to cover it up. Now that, that is the media's COVID hero. 